Ladies and gentlemen, I want to portray myself to you as the champion of a material which is generally around us, which we're very familiar with, but do we appreciate it? No, we don't look at it, we look through it. And yet, glass is part of the very fabric of our society. I want you to do something for me. Will you now close your eyes? Yeah? Now, what you're looking at with your eyes closed is a vision of an interior without glass. No windows, no lamp bulbs, no spectacles. Dismal, isn't it? Well, I think you can relax now. Because we have a love affair with glass. Glass has been around for four and a half thousand years. And in fact, it was the Romans in this country who first pioneered the use of glass in windows. So in a Roman bathhouse, you would see a sort of fan-shaped window, satisfactorily high to let the light in, but to preserve modesty. Winding the clock on to the medieval period, you would find glass spreading its way across Europe in the form of stained glass windows. But it cost an arm and a leg, and only the very richest could afford it. And yet those windows serve to define an interior environment as distinct from the outside. The glass was made in quite small furnaces, wood-fired. And do you realise that to make a tonne of glass then, they had to burn no less than 60 tonnes of wood. And that released about 100 tonnes of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Small wonder the glass was expensive, and small wonder the environmental hit got a very bad press. Things are better now. Now we use much bigger furnaces and we take a lot of care about how little we can pollute the environment. We control any of the emissions incredibly carefully. And as a result of all of this care, we can now say that we've reduced the energy content per tonne of glass to a mere 7 gigajoules per tonne. And the amount of CO2 that we emit into the atmosphere is now not 50 tonnes, it's not 20 tonnes, it's a mere 0.2 tonnes per tonne of glass. So glass makers have really cut back upon the impact that their product has on the environment. But what they have been able to do is to deliver much better environmental benefits. We love to have our interior space separated from the outside. And in order to let the light in, we've got to have glass to control that. So if you happen to have an office somewhere in sunny California, you might be glad of green glass in the windows, which absorbs the solar energy and stops you from baking too hot. And it means you don't have to have such an expensive air conditioning unit. Here in England, it's, it's chilly. And so we're more interested in keeping the heat in. Now... In this country, you can do that by using glass which has a very thin coating, th mere 300 microns thick, on the inside piece of a double glaze unit. And what that coating does, it's a low emissivity coating, and it stops the long wavelength radiation from inside the room escaping out through the window. That means that the inside surface of the window runs, instead of being freezing, it runs at about 15 degrees Celsius, which is quite warm. That cuts out the draft that chops your ankles off. And it means you can turn down the central heating and still have the comfort. Imagine the impact that makes on power at the power station. Do you know, if every single glazed property in the United Kingdom were to be double glazed with a low emissivity coated unit, then we would save enough energy to fire the whole, or to heat the whole of the city of Birmingham six times over, year in, year out. Now that, for me, is a very positive environmental impact. But there's more. If you are delivered from the problem of losing heat through the windows, you're encouraged to use creatively in your design lots more area of glass. But then how do you clean it? If you happen to be the manager of a conference centre, it costs an arm and a leg to get people up on cranes and dangling from scaffolding and so on to clean the windows. 
Pilkington decided to address this problem and as yet is the only supplier, I'm afraid, in the marketplace. But a thin coating of titanium dioxide on the outside surface of the glass does magical things. As soon as the sunlight hits it, if it's been exposed to the sunlight for, oh, a few hours, you get generated free radicals, chemical free radicals, in the surface. And those nibble away at any kind of adhering organic muck on the windows. If the pigeon has left its calling card, for example, these free radicals will start to nibble away at the adhesion. But they do more than that. They create a surface which is inherently wettable. So that instead of raindrops appearing on your window and then drying into a sort of speckle pattern, instead the water, the rainwater sheets, it forms a flat surface and it sluices off. And that's brilliant because when it rains it carries away all this adhering matter that's no longer adhering. So you have a window which is inherently self-cleaning and it does that without any kind of added detergent. So again, there's a positive benefit to the environment. So now just two of those examples of innovation in, in glass making are setting free designers to explore the possibilities of glass as a separation of the interior environment from the exterior environment. I suppose we could save environmental impact by not having glass at all, but then that prospect is just too horrible to contemplate. Thank you.